Look the part, play the part. Yako sponsors Vanarama National League on BT Sport. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vanarama National League Highlight Show on BT Sport. On Good Friday, our cameras were at Prenton Park to see promotion rivals Tranmere Rovers take on Aldershot. A significant game for both clubs with Rovers still chasing the title and Aldershot looking to secure a playoff place. More on that game in just a moment. First, here are your headlines. Lincoln on the brink of the title after two late goals sink Torquay. Southport are relegated after they crumble at Crabble. And Solihull's sixth defeat in a row sees them slide towards the drop zone. First up, a massive match to kick off a jam-packed show. Tramir Rovers knew they had to win to give themselves the best possible chance of catching league leaders Lincoln City. But their opponents on Good Friday, Aldershot, had just as much to play for, with the playoff places still up for grabs. Your commentary comes from Chris Hargreaves and Adam Summerton. Straker. It's a good ball. And McNulty trying to win it back, but hasn't been able to, and it's in. Aldershot rewarded for their early intent here at Brenton Park. And it's Matt McClaw, recalled to the side today, who has got the opening goal here. Well, it's the worst possible start. Absolutely no pressure on the ball whatsoever, and so deep. Great little run, though, from McClaw, and he just digs it out of his feet. Gets a little bit of luck, but the determination and lovely bit of skill at the end just to dink it over the keeper. This is Nord. Stockton getting up in support. Nord decides to have a go and it's been spilled in here. <laughs> Equalising goal for Tranmere Rovers is scored by Carl Stockton. A little bit of quality from Connor Jennings, a great ball through. It's, it's sort of a, a sort of weak strike, really. Keeper's got to do so much better there, I think. But I have to say the follow-up and the finish is excellent. Mensa. Benyon managed to find a bit of space and he's found Mensa again. Brilliant ball! Fine save by Davis. Really good goalkeeping. You won't see a better reverse ball than Kundai Benyu there. Absolutely tremendous. It's just a great ball. Good timing, should score. Mensa's had a good season. Six National League goals, but unable to make it seven there. There's a great chance here and it's been taken! Connor Jennings for Tranmere Rovers with his fifth National League goal of the season. Just absolutely turned off on this throw in. Centre half, just, just ball watching. Great finish, good anticipation in a flash of an eye. Goal. And he does not miss in those situations. Up towards McClure. This is Mensa to strike it early. Oh, what a good finish. Really good goal from Bernard Mensa, found that bottom corner, such a precise finish. Well, what a good move, great diagonal ball, first of all, from Nick Arnold, good little flick. There we're coming up, McClough wins the header, the first touch is just off his knee, takes him a bit wide, but what a brilliant finish that is. You're just praying for one chance, the one chance to go to your goal scorer. Well, I come here for Jennings, and Evans took it away from him for the moment. Tramir desperately trying to keep it going, Maynard with the header, Jennings plays it wide, Born with the cross, and cut out by Evans. Last ditch defending, but they got the job done. Brilliant piece of defending again. All square at Brenton Park. A point each for Tramir and Aldershot on a day when both badly craved all three. Nicky Mellon and Gary Waddock. May yet meet again in the playoffs, who knows? We were second to an awful lot in that first 25 minutes. We just asked the question why that was at second half, uh, in the first half. Second half, we started it much better, sort of got on the front foot a little bit. Um, and it just wasn't to be. I think there was a few like a few free kicks and corners that we thought maybe in a tight game like this you might you might nick it, but it wasn't to be. How much of an achievement would it be for Aldershot to make the playoffs? It would be an unbelievable achievement. We want to do it, of course we do. But if we don't, 
these group of players have done extremely well this season. We're really ahead of where we should be, you know, because we've only come together this season. And, you know, if we can, as I said before the game, if we can keep this group together, you know, hopefully at some point we'll be able to uh, go where we want to go to. With Tranmere only drawing, an opportunity presented itself for Lincoln to move five points clear at the top of the National League, but the visitors desperately needed a result in their bid to avoid relegation. Danny Cowley's team were chasing a fifth league win in succession. Jack Muldoon had Torquay's Brendan Moore at full stretch to keep the game goalless at half-time. The Imps began the day three points clear of Tranmere, but they might have sensed their luck wasn't in when a Sam Habergan cross was deflected into the path of Adam Marriott, who was denied by the post. The fans at Sinsel Bank were taking on an emotional roller coaster in the closing stages. Rory Keating was on hand to bundle home and give Torquay an unlikely lead with 12 minutes to go. Cowley's looked to his bench for inspiration so much this season. With four minutes left to play, two subs combined when Marriott's shot was parried into the path of Harry Anderson, who drew Lincoln level. And an incredible turnaround was complete courtesy of a sensational free kick from Habergham in the 88th minute. A win at Gateshead on Monday, live on BT Sport, could see Lincoln return to the Football League after six years. It just feels that we need to get another another five points. That's what it is. You know, somebody in the dressing room just said that it's, you know, performances like that or wins like that, comebacks like that are what champions are made of. But they're not. Champions are made of the team that gets the most points at the end of the season. And we need to get five points. We need to play a bit better if we can. Um, but if we can't play better, we need just to keep fighting like we are. And as I just said, I can't, I can't um, tell you how proud I am of the fighter, fighter we've got. Forest Green Rovers won away at Tranmere in midweek, a result that did more damage to their opponents' promotion hopes than it did to enhance their own. But Mark Cooper's men were out to confirm their place in the playoffs against an out-of-form Chester. The first sight of goal fell to top scorer Christian Deutsch, who was denied by the post. It was clear to see which team was full of confidence. Forest Green's Kane Woolery trying his look from long range, producing a flying save from Chester keeper Alex Lynch. John McCarthy saw his defence under siege in the first half. This time, Omar Bugil beat Lynch via a deflection, but he didn't beat the crossbar. It didn't take long after the restart for the host to make their dominance count, and it was that man Doidge with a cool finish. 25 this season for the Welsh striker. It was one-way traffic in Gloucestershire. Kane Woolery making space for the shot. Further frustration for Forest Green, hitting the woodwork for a third time. But there was to be no smash and grab from the visitors. Liam Noble sealing all three points with a sublime strike. Forest Green season will be extending into May for the third year in a row. We just concentrate on what we do and, uh, and try and keep winning games and, and keep the momentum going. That's three wins and three clean sheets for us, so we're in a good place at the moment. Victory for Lincoln officially ended Dagenham and Redbridge's distant hopes of automatic promotion, and John Still's men are yet to officially claim a playoff place. Three points at Boreham Wood would go a long way to making it possible. It was the hosts who struck first at Meadow Park, Morgan Ferrier getting the better of Scott Doe before teeing up Ricky Shakes 1-0. The Daggers conceded early at Macclesfield last weekend. They came back to win that one 4-1 and they were back on level terms after half an hour. Corey Whiteley's cross scrambled in at the second attempt by veteran striker Paul Benson. Whiteley was the architect for the away side as he has been so often. His curling effort was well kept out by Borehamwood's Grant Smith just after the break. And a fast start to the second half saw the Daggers take the lead. Benson unmarked and on the score sheet for the second time. The 37-year-old Benson then missed a glorious chance for his hat-trick, heading wide. It was left to Whiteley to make the game safe as he headed past Smith, his 15th of the campaign. No team has scored more goals on the road than the Daggers this season, which could serve them well in the playoffs. I've seen us do it before. We come back, we're behind, we come back. We kept our football, we played our game, and I thought it, you know, I thought it, it, it was a first-class performance today against a very, very strong uh, and a very committed Boreham Wood side, but I thought we were first-class today.
bottom of the table, Southport knew that if other results went against them, defeat at Dover would signal relegation to the National League North. But the hosts had their own motivation. Victory would take Chris Kinney's team into the top five. And it was only a miraculous goal line clearance from Robbie Cundy that prevented Southport slipping behind early on. But the deadlock was broken just before the half-hour mark. Ricky Modest getting the better of Neil Ashton before beating Chris Cheatham at the second attempt. This time the ball ruled to have crossed the line. With 20 minutes to go, Dover delivered a dagger to the heart of Southport. Ricky Miller's volley somehow found a way through goalkeeper Cheetham. A 36th league goal of the season for Miller as the dreaded drop beckoned for the visitors. Dover face Aldershot in a mouth-watering matchup on Monday and they go into that game ahead of their opponents in the race for the playoffs. Modest stealing in for his second as Southport's seven-year stay in the National League comes to an end. You know, we're more than capable of coming back into this league uh, and, and beyond because uh, um, you can see that you know it only just takes getting the right balance uh, uh, within the squad and within the within the team that you can you can be up the top like like Dover has shown. It's a bit of a nervy time for everybody, uh, and you can see by some of the results that went today that uh, it's not going to be easy. But as I say, for the last five years we've been in and around playoffs, uh, and we've always had something to play for. So hopefully the lads have got used to that, but still a long way to go yet. There really is. A defeat and a draw in their last two matches had left Barrow three points off the top five. They travelled to take on Bromley, who are looking to confirm they'll be playing National League football next season. The home side came flying out of the blocks. A free header for George Porter at the back post. Bromley in front within ten minutes. Paul Cox's side have spent much of the campaign fighting for a playoff place and they were given the chance to equalise less than ten minutes later. Jack Thomas's run halted by Connor Diamond, penalty to Barrow. Richie Bennett stepped up to confidently convert for his 14th of the season. In a frantic first half, referee Craig Hicks was pointing to the spot again only a couple of minutes later when Bromley's Blair Turgot was fouled by Danny Livesey. Turgut took on the responsibility to register his 12th of the campaign and restore Bromley's advantage. And 2-1 became 3-1 when Toby Show Silver nodded in from close range. He's now got five in his last three. Barrow's best opportunity to reduce the deficit came when Akeel Wright's header was pushed onto the post by Ross Flitney. Just moments later, Bromley confirmed they'll be staying in the fifth tier when Shane McLaughlin's shot was spilled and Show Silver was there to follow up. A big blow for Barrow's playoff hopes, now six points off the top five with three games remaining. Just one win in seven games had seriously dented Gateshead's playoff hopes. They knew only a victory away at Sutton would be sufficient to realistically keep their chances of a top five finish alive. On the contrary, Sutton were looking to ease any lingering relegation fears they may have. And they were handed a golden opportunity to take the lead moments before half time when Dan Hanford brought down Maxime Biamu in the box. Rory Deakin confidently dispatched his seventh of the season from the spot to give his side the lead at the break. Paul Doswell's side were looking for just their second winner in 11 matches. They doubled their lead on the hour mark when Biamu reacted quickest in the box before firing past Hanford. The hosts thought they'd scored a third when Jamie Collins headed in at the far post, but the Sutton captain was penalised for a push on Luke Hannant. A third goal was on the cards for Sutton as Gates had failed to record a single shot on target. It came when Craig Dundas squared for Biamu to tap in his second of the afternoon. The three points move Sutton up to 13th and they now have a top half finish in their sights. Gateshead's plough hopes have all but evaporated. A dreadful run of five defeats in a row meant that Solihull sat only three points above the drop zone at the start of play. They faced a York team who had climbed out of the relegation places for the first time since November after last week's 2-0 victory at Chester. It was the informer wayside that opened the scoring after a quarter of an hour. Dane Oliver tapping in after John Parkin's free kick came off the post. 
Gary Mills's men then made it two on the half hour mark. Oliver doubled his teams and his own tally with a composed finish after linking up with Asa Hall. But the hosts got themselves back into the game right on half time thanks to this excellent free kick from Harry White. 2 1 at the interval. York in their fight for survival will hope Scott Loach continues the type of performance he had in the second half as Solihull bombarded City's goal. First, he kept out White from close range before producing another point-blank save to once again deny White. York's fourth win in five means they move ahead of Solihull. Liam McDonald's side stay out of the relegation places on goal difference. The game could have been over at half-time and then goals change games. You know, they score a great free kick. Gives them a massive lift and they've had a few chances second half and it was a different game. But I thought it was the best 45 we've played all season for me. We're still down there with everybody else, so you know it just shows how important. I think we've won four out of five now, so it just shows how important those wins are. I thought we were we were poor first half, um, like we have been over over a number of games. But I thought second half we we were we were much better, and you know we're we're disappointed we haven't got anything out of the game. I thought we deserved it. Four consecutive defeats had seen Braintree drop back into the bottom four for the first time since December. They hosted a Geisley team still well within the relegation picture themselves. In a tight first half, the clearest opportunity fell to Adam Boys, but the Geisley forward could only hit the side netting. Shortly after half-time, the home side went ahead when Jerome Akimo found space in the box to head home his first for the club. The Essex side then made it two through Michael Cheek, who volleyed home after Manny Parry had headed back across goal. That's Cheek's 19th league goal of the season, an impressive tally for a team battling the drop. The three points not enough for Braintree to move out of the relegation places. They remain in the bottom four on goal difference. Geisley are now just one point above the drop zone. It was a tight game, you know, we knew that Geisley were going to be a tough opposition, but I thought we deserved it in the end and we're happy with the three points. We're fighting and we've got to continue fighting and we've got three big games coming up. North Ferriby knew they had a huge amount to do if they were to extend their stay in the fifth tier to a second season after those victories for York and Braintree. Anything other than a win against Eastleigh would have resigned Steve Howsham's men to National League North football for next season. The hosts had lost eight of their previous nine at home, but they took the lead here when Robbie Tinkler capitalised on a mix-up between Gavin Hoyt and keeper Graham Stack to score his fourth in six games. Eastley almost hit back immediately, but somehow a combination of Tom Bolton and James Middleton kept out Sam Matthews and then Craig McAllister from close range. Richard Hill's men did get their goal, though, with 15 minutes to go when a sweetly struck Ross Stern shot went past on lone Wigan keeper Owen Evans. With the game looking set to finish all square, North Ferriby stole it right at the end when a cross-come shot from Sam Topless was met by top scorer Rhys Thompson. The win means North Ferriby lived to fight another day, but realistically only a miraculous turn of events would see Howsham's men survive. Some of the football players was a joy to watch and you know I questioned, questioned them at half time and asked them, they must have been enjoying it because we were playing some good stuff, moving it about well. The only downside is that we didn't come more than one up in the first half, we had chances, we could have easily crumbled but we didn't, we dug deep, we had big hearts and you know that letter R is still not against our name. Woking only sat outside the relegation places on goal difference at the start of the day. Their fight for survival continued with a home tie against FA Trophy finalist Macclesfield. The visitors knew only a victory would be enough to keep their faint playoff hopes alive. They went closest in the early stages through Chris Holroyd, but his acrobatic effort rebounded off the bar before Reese Brown headed over. It was a tight affair at Kingfield, but the hosts were handed a huge opportunity to break the deadlock after an hour when referee Carl Brook ruled that Danny Whitaker pulled Kane Ferdinand in the box, penalty Woking. Top scorer Gozi Ugwe took responsibility from the spot and he coolly converted to edge his side into the lead. The visitors had the chance to snatch an equaliser late on through David Fitzpatrick. The fullback was denied by a crucial save from Woking keeper Michael Polk. 
A vital three points for Woking, who stay out of the relegation places. They travelled to Chester on Monday before a six-pointer against relegation rivals York in a week's time. It's pressure. It's uh, a big question the players to stand up and be counted in every way of form. And I thought from, you know, one all the way through the playing squad and the management team and the support we've done very well. Maidstone suffered a rare blip in their otherwise sparkling recent resurgence when they lost 3-0 to Macclesfield on Tuesday. Prior to that loss, six wins from eight games had eased Jay Saunders' side towards safety in their first season in the National League. Wrexham had lost four of their last six, but it was Dean Keats's team who took the lead on nine minutes when Jordan White headed in his fourth of the campaign. The visitors levelled on the half-hour mark, the Wrexham defence twice failing to clear before Alex Flisher squared for Joe Piggott to poke in his fifth in ten games. Wrexham had kept only two clean sheets in 16 matches in 2017 and after half-time their defensive frailties were exposed again as Jamal Loza jinked his way into the box before firing past Juan Jalal to become his club's top scorer. The hosts were awarded a penalty just past the hour mark when Magnus Okunyai was deemed to have brought down Antumba Masanka in the box. But Anthony Barry, only off the bench a minute earlier, saw his tame effort saved from the spot by Lee Worgan. Jay Saunders' side secured the point seven minutes from time when the unmarked Flisher headed in Jack Paxman's corner as Maidstone move up to 15th and will be all but safe if they win at home to Boreham Wood on Easter Monday. Confirmation that Southport are relegated from the National League. North Ferriby look as though they will join them as they can only achieve a maximum of 48 points, but it couldn't be tighter as there are already four teams at that total already. Geisley aren't out of the woods yet. They face Tranmere on Monday, followed by Bromley, and then what could be a real relegation dogfight between Solihull Moors on the final day of the season. Lincoln City have one hand on the trophy after that dramatic comeback against Torquay and Tranmere's failure to win over Aldershot. Anything other than three points for Mickey Mellon's men against Geisley on Monday would mean Danny Cowley's side could seal the title at Gateshead. Forest Green and Dagenham and Redbridge all but secure their place in the playoffs. Barrow, Gateshead and Macclesfield all lost, which almost crushes their chances of fifth place. It now seems between Aldershot and Dover who face each other on Monday. It's going to be a fascinating run into the end of the season and BT Sport are right in the thick of it. We're in Gateshead on Monday as champions elect Lincoln City. Now a win over Neil Aspin's side could mean the title is theirs and it's all exclusively live from 2.30 on BT Sport 1 and on our 4K UHD channel. It doesn't stop there because we'll bring you all the highlights from Monday's 3 o'clock kickoffs in a special midweek National League highlight show on Tuesday from 10.30 p.m. on BT Sport 2. That's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Look the part, play the part. Yako sponsors Vanarama National League on BT Sport.